Halloween events and trick or treat bashes are starting this weekend. Safety is priority at KPRC 2. We want to make sure you have all the tools you need to celebrate the spooky holiday safely. And with that, joining me this morning is Crime Stoppers Director of Victim Services and our friend Andy Kahn. Good morning, sir. Thank you so hey, much for coming in. Halloween's my favorite holiday. Yes. But we got to make sure that families are safe. Yes, and safety is priority with that. From, you know, trick-or-treating to uh, with safe costumes to knowing where exactly you're going, whose door you're knocking on. You know, in Texas, we have over 60,000 registered sex offenders. A majority of sex offenders, particularly those who are on parole and or probation, are restricted from having their lights on, they are not allowed to have decorations, mm -hmm. and they are not allowed to give out candy. But it's important for families to know kind of who's in their neighborhood, right, so houses that you can avoid. And this is something that we preach you know, on a daily basis. Check your zip code because what you have living in your area today doesn't necessarily mean it will happen in the next week or so. So let me show you an example. Yes. So if you go to the Texas Public Sex Offender rep website, you just click on zip code. Okay. And I can just put on a zip code. Let's put one not far from your station, 77099. And I was looking at this last week and there's a reason that I started looking at it. So I'm scrolling down here and you can look on each individual sex offender. But I did notice a trend that okay. there is one address, particularly it's 12704, and it's public record, so what I'm saying is public. It's 12704 Dairy Brook. And I started noticing, because I started seeing the same address popping up oh, again, yeah, right 12714 Dairy Brook. Look, 12714, that's, 127. That's four. Right, there's four. Wow. I ended up with a total of six. Here's another one right wow. here. So there's six sex offenders living in one house. What is that? It's basically an alternative housing facility. Okay. And believe it or not, these pop-up homes are in neighborhoods. But you're not going to know that unless you go to the website and you put in your zip code and you start seeing the street addresses. Okay. So I just picked that up just right. from looking at it right here. So I encourage families, before they go trick-or-treating, put up your zip code because you never know if you're gonna have a situation yeah. like the one I'm just showing you right here, and that would be a house to avoid. Yeah, you wanna know whose door you're knocking on. Okay, so w w let's bring us back a, right. a few steps here. Uh, for those who might not be familiar with this list, when does a person have to register? Basically, anyone who is convicted of a sexual offense per the penal code, there's different types of registry. Some have to register annually, some have to register quarterly, some have to register for lifetime. It just depends. But if you're on parole or probation, you cannot participate in any Halloween activities. But if you've discharged your sentence, and again, you can look at right. each individual case to determine whether or not they're on parole or probation, you can participate in Halloween activities. So not all sex offenders are okay. prohibited. That's good Just to know. those that are currently under some form of supervision. Somewhere on this list, too, I saw level. What does level mean? What does that indicate? So if we put up an individual, let's just pull up this guy right here. And I think I looked at him. So he's got a moderate level. So there's a low level, moderate, and high. So a lot of it just depends on the type of offense that you were convicted of. So this particular individual, they don't tell you everything right here. He was convicted of indecency with a child by contact, and you can see all the different. They uh, have photos, shot, photos of these, yeah. Heck, they even have shoe sizes. They have everything on here. They have the address, the name, everything. You can see the weight, height, everything. So there's a lot of information that can be called from. This was actually a piece of legislation that I worked on in getting passed in 1999. Not that I'm aging myself, but. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, this is a really great tool. It's a, it's a great resource for uh, parents, for people in the community. Do you suggest that if, if, if you go down the list and you see, uh, you come across a home within your neighborhood, would you suggest parents show their children that name, th th this person, so they are aware in the event they come across 
uh, this individual in, in, in to, uh, on Halloween it's, night? It's not a bad idea. I don't see any downside in doing that. And again, it's just awareness. We're not saying, you know, you know, you know, avoid everything, but it's good to have that knowledge as well. And trust me, sex offenders, I've seen this because we've actually have, uh, there was a, a manual that we ended up getting a hold of that was written by a child molester, and he had a how-to manual, and he actually had how to find child victims on certain holidays, including mm. Halloween. So it's, it's not above reproach that Halloween is a great recruiting tool for yeah. sex offenders. Yeah. I noticed there uh, is also a register for email alerts. If someone signs up for that, what type of information uh, will they be receiving? You can get an email alert, and that was another bill that we passed. If a high-risk sex offender moves into your neighborhood, by law, you will actually get a postcard in the mail as well. And the basically, I it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like a saying. hi. I'm your new neighbor. I'm such and such. Yes, I'm a registered sex offender, but I'm living over here. So if you get a postcard in the mail, you know you can either thank me or condemn me <laughs> or one of the two there. But yes, you can. And one of the things that I again emphasize is just because what you look at today doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same yeah. a month from now. Yeah. Sex offenders by nature are transient, yeah. so I would encourage They're families constantly to constantly check the okay. list. Yeah, that's really good information. I, I, I don't recall if this is still uh, in, in act in Florida, but I, from, from my time there, I feel like uh, sex offenders, registered sex offenders in the state of Florida on Halloween would have to put up some sort of signage. Um, is that, do, do you recall that being accurate? Maybe in Florida, right. but in Texas, we're actually one of the few states that has laws prohibiting any right. any signs or anything notifying well, you. Well, it's so, saying like you can't stop here. I, I would have to go back and yeah, check, but no, I, something I, sounds... I've not seen that okay. in Texas. Basically, you're not supposed to have your lights on. No decorations. No decorations. Yeah. You're not supposed okay. to be seen. And trust me, law enforcement officials, parole, parole and probation officers will be doing spot checks as well. And if you come across someone on the list, on this list, and you know their home is decorated, what should you do? Well, first of all, you want to check to make sure they're still on parole or probation, because like I said, if they've discharged their sentence, they certainly can they, throw they're up like anybody yeah. else. Right. Yeah. But I would just notify law okay. enforcement officials as a precautionary measure. Andy Kahn, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Anytime. For